Welcome to Inside the Dugout, a Rams and Rambells season preview, sponsored by City National Bank. Good evening, I'm Ryan Campo. And I'm Sabrina Hoover. Welcome to Inside the Dugout, a 2023 season preview for ASU baseball and softball presented by City National Bank. The next half hour will be spent talking about the diamond, particularly Angelo State baseball and softball. Two teams at Angelo State with so much history as they look to add to it this 2023 season. Over the next half hour, we'll hear from both coaches Kevin Brooks and Travis Scott, along with players from each team during this special. Well, let's start with the Rams and what a season it was for Coach Kevin Brooks and company. It would be a year of streaks for ASU on the diamond last season. As the calendar turned to April, the Rams would see streaks of 7, 5, and 8. Then after West Texas A&M came to town, taking 3 out of 4, a switch was flipped. ASU would go on a heater to end the season, getting victories in 20 straight games, including a 25-0 road record. They would turn that hot play into an LSC tournament championship and South Central Regional champs and rallying to defeat Colorado Mesa to head back to the College World Series for the second year in a row. The Rams would start off playing carry on the right foot, taking game one to Southern New Hampshire before falling in games two and three, finishing fifth in the country. As for the Rambells, just like the Rams, it was quite the streak they went on to begin the 2022 campaign for head coach Travis Scott. The Rambells would start the season 15-1 and after three weeks of tournament play, gearing up for the gauntlet that is the Lone Star Conference in softball. It was a squad with just one senior on it last year for the Rambells, but they put on quite the show on the diamond for fans here in San Angelo. After a 22-8 and conference record, ASU would finish fourth, falling in the tournament opener before making their 16th trip to the NCAA Division II softball tournament. Tournament. Over in Tyler, the Rambells would drop a heartbreaker in 13 innings to open postseason play before downing Colorado Christian, extending their season for another game with their season on the line. ASU would fall to the eventual national semifinalist UT Tyler, ending their season with a 39-12 and record. And sticking with the Rambells, I had the chance to catch up with head coach Travis Scott before the season kicks off. And here's that interview with him right now. All right, Coach, so 20 years as a Ramble head coach, what's the process been like to this point? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, it, it's, it's just been, I mean, luckily it's been full of success. You know, I inherited a pretty good group when we first got here, and uh, Kat and uh, Hefner and Kathy Rodolph did a good job of building the program. Uh, in its first couple of years and you know it felt lucky enough to be able to take over Kathleen Brassfield Jerry Vandergriff hired me so thankful for them to forgive me that opportunity and and then you know to have a national championship under your belt and a national runner-up and six trips to the World Series it's just uh, you know I've been blessed and been fortunate to be able to have the success here and um, great fan base um, you know, it's just one of those things that I'm thankful for. And, and then speaking on last year, I mean, 16th trip to the NCAA tournament last year, you know, what's what, what, what went on last year? Like, what was your thoughts overall on how it went? Well, you know, it was a it was a group that was experienced and young all at the same time. It was kind of kind of a weird combination when I was describing the group. But, you know, we were a little short staffed in the pitching circle. We had a, a young lady that we recruited that didn't survive the fall. Uh, just to be honest, and then that kind of left us a little short-handed uh, with Tori and Genesis, but uh, they really stepped up. They stayed healthy throughout the spring, which was vital, and, and they gave us a great opportunity to win nearly every game we played. And and offensively, yeah, you know, you go Ashlyn Lerma had a phenomenal year in the leadoff spot. Um, you know, hit 360-370 with 51 stolen bases. And then Paxton Scherrier just went off, you know, with 23 home runs and ended up being a first-team All-American as a result. So when you can get players to step up and play to that ability, you're going to have a good chance to win games. And and we just uh, we didn't hit enough late in the season uh, in the playoffs, and that's something that uh, we've talked about from day one is making sure that you know getting to that point, of course. But when we get there, we got to perform a little better against the really good pitchers. Exactly, and you've added obviously a lot of talent back, some transfers now, some recruits. What's the excitement like surrounding this new team? Well, I, I, more importantly, I'm. Most importantly, I'm excited about the attitude right now. The attitude from the Christmas break back has been great, and uh, the team chemistry has been really good. You know, it's something that you always work on with teams, but uh, it doesn't always happen. And, um, you know, the fall, we, we, we have a good start, and then you kind of get into your group separating a little bit. And But I tell you, they come back from Christmas break, and it's been all 
uh, all 18 of them just full full steam ahead, and and that's exciting. But with the talent that we have back, I mean, pretty much it's the same team that you've seen the last two years. Obviously, it's <clears throat> an advantage to have a lot of talent coming back. You know, how does that kind of help, especially in a conference like the Lone Star Conference? Well, you better be you better be talented and you better be experienced, or you're going to get uh, left behind in this conference. But unfortunately, the top teams in this program all return a lot of really good players. Also, there's not anybody that was at the top last year that's dropped off. So, you know, you go with UT Tyler, Lovett Christian, Kingsville, um, West Texas A&M, St. Mary's, it's all going to be a battle again. And uh, last year we got a lot of really big wins off those teams, but we seemed to split. We never could sweep those teams. And, you know, it's better than getting swept. That's kind of the way you got to look at it. But hopefully this year we can find a way to sweep some people at the top and give us a chance to, to be in that uh, – I think we finished in with a three-way tie for third place, but we were only two games behind first place. So it just shows you how competitive it was at the top, most especially, and it's going to be a dogfight again, and hopefully we can find ourselves right in the middle of it again. A new way of scheduling this season, three-game yeah. doubleheaders. How will that impact you guys this season? Well, you take, uh, you know, last year we played everybody two times. This year we're going back to playing everybody three games. Mainly the biggest deal is just, just a lot more travel because, um, you know, whereas last year we would, the last couple of years, we would go spend a weekend. It was a long weekend, but uh, you would play two teams. This year you're traveling the same distance just to play one team, and then you may have to go right back down to that area at some point in the season and play them again. So it's going to be fatigue. Uh, our season is a shorter season than baseball. Our, shorter, our season's a shorter season than nearly every sport. And uh, but yeah, we're still doing that travel. So that's something that we've got to be aware of is making sure that we get our rest and and we eat properly and things of that nature. And it's hard to do as a college kid. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you. And Travis Scott mentioned some of the talent coming back, including the talent added. And we had a chance to get to know the new weapon on the mound for the Rambells. That was one of my top things was, you know, I want to go somewhere that we're going to compete for a national title. Coming off a 39-12 and 12 season in 2022 and their 16th appearance in NCAA postseason play, the Rambells have added some more talent to their pitching staff. Coming from a JUCO, I have one of my past teammates here, so that was a warm welcome for me. But um, my transition was great. Very small town, community feel, and it's just awesome. Head coach Travis Scott is confident in the new weapon they have added to the mound. Well, anytime you got good, experienced pitching, you know, that gives you a lot of hope and then adding a, a quality junior college player who has a lot of experience and played for a successful program at McLennan and went to the World Series. She got a championship experience last year, finished as a national runner-up. When you add a, a player like that to your staff, you know, you feel really good about things. For Cheyenne Floyd, success is something she knew she would find when transitioning to Angelo State. You know, Coach Scott's a competitor. They're a competitor, and it's one of the biggest, deepest conferences in the country. And I knew that coming into, you know, a ranked school that I was going to have to compete and we were going to win. Having a wide range of talent to turn to this season allows the Rambles to be in a comfortable spot. I think it just gets us back to where we needed to be. Um, last year, it was pretty much a Tory and Genesis. We had some other kids that pitched a little bit, but, uh, you know, probably not in crucial situations. So it gets us back to getting to that comfort zone of not having to wear those three out or those two out. And with the 2023 season beginning this weekend for the Rainbows, ASU picked to finish second this year in the Lone Star Conference, only trailing UT Tyler, who was the South Central Region champs a year ago. The Rainbows receiving 474 points behind the Patriots' 550 and 35 place votes, narrowly ahead of Texas A&M Kingsville's 466, Lubbock Christian's 454. The Rainbows also ranked number 18 in the NFCA preseason poll as well. <laughs> us a goal because obviously we aren't number one so there is a team that we are chasing but having us ranked so high in the conference also puts a target on our back as well okay. and it just means that you know we're respected in our conference and that we just have to keep pushing and always chase number one so that people eventually chase us after that all right, here's a look at the standings for the upcoming season for the LSC poll. As we mentioned, UT Tyler at number one, the Rambells at number two, Kingsville, Lubbock Christian, and Oklahoma Christian rounding out the top five. Six through ten, see West Texas A&M, St. Mary's, Cameron, St. Edwards, and Texas Women's. And rounding out the preseason poll, A&M International, Eastern New Mexico, Midwestern State, UT Permian Basin, and Western New Mexico. The Bells will get their season started on the road for the 2023 season over in Conroe, Texas for the Division II 
Blue Spring Invitational kick off playing six games over a span of three days, including the opener against number eight Central Oklahoma. The Rambells return home February the 10th for the ASU George and Ola McCorkle Challenge, playing another five games in a three-day span at home against Texas A&M International and East Central. Action on the 10th for the Rambells kicks off on the 10th at 2:20 against the Dust Devils before the conference opener over at Meyer Stadium with a three-game series starting February the 17th against West Texas A&M. And as we venture outside the pitching circle, it's been quite the career for Ambell infielder Paxton Shurier with her career year last season. She hopes to build upon it in 2023, and I had the chance to catch up with her ahead of this season. All right, Paxton, so a big year that you had last year at ASU, you know, how are you hoping to continue that dominance at the plate this season? Um, just really keep crafting, um, improving in every way, and knowing that people are going to try to throw to my weaknesses and making those my strengths. And obviously, you know, a big achievement for you, you were named LSC Preseason Player of the Year, you know, how, what, what does that honor kind of mean to you? Um, it really just means that I had a good year last year um, and that it's a goal that I want to get postseason player of the year. Ultimately, that's the goal and to go to a national championship. You know, a young group last year. Mm -hmm. How do you guys grow every day to make yourself the best version of yourselves? Um, I think the key is just getting a little bit better every single day. Um, whether that be energy-wise, uh, offensively, defensively, we just have to get a little bit better every day. Um, and if we improve every day, then by the time postseason gets here, we'll be ready to go. Exactly. And, you know, talking to Coach, he, you know, talked about a lot of talent coming back. You know, how does that kind of help you guys, you know, for getting an advantage to this new season? Right. So in the in conference, I think our core or our returners will have that experience in those big games when it's tied in the bottom of the seventh. We'll have that experience because we've been there before um, and we'll really just get after it in those big situations. And then talking about the newcomers, you know, what have you seen from them? You know, how are you guys trying to lead them, I guess, into this new season? Right. Those newcomers are eager to learn. Um, they really they want to buy into the program. And I think that's something that you can't teach. Um, but they're really ready to buy in and um, get after it once season starts. So it's exciting to see. In each practice, I know, you know, gets you guys have like weaknesses and strengths. What have you seen so far within this team after each after each week, I guess? Uh, really, the energy has stayed super high. Um, we're cheering each other on. We're each other's biggest fans, and that's something that not every team has. So I think that can really be a game changer for us. And then having Coach Scott, obviously his 20th year as the <laughs> Rambell head coach, you know, mm -hmm. having him with this team, how has he helped you personally the last few days or a few years at ASU? Right, he has helped me grow um, on the field, off the field, um, and just making me a better person toward when I enter the real world in four months. Um, just really pushing me to be the best person that I can be, and that's all that a player and an athlete could ask for. Exactly, I love that. And then, you know, new scheduling this year, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, three game double headers. Just touch on how that will kind of impact you guys. I think ultimately, I think we're just going to get after it like we always do. Um, we have another a pitching addition this year, which would really help in that situation. Um, but I think it will give us a chance to win a series instead of splitting. So we're going to win as many sweep, hopefully, win as many series as is possible. I love that. Yeah. And, you know, just I guess you personally, you know, the last few years that you've been here, you know, what have you seen from yourself? How have you grown after each year? Um, athletically, I think I've really improved. Um, just since my freshman year, I have become more of a leader um, on the field, and I've really taken a lot of the freshmen and the newcomers under my wing and shown them the ropes. Um, and that's something that I really like enjoy doing. Um, and then academically, um, I've gotten a undergrad degree and I'm working towards a master's and I can't ask for any more than that. And lastly, I mean, to have a national title, like what would it mean to have that to bring it to San Angelo? I mean, that's the ultimate goal. Um, that's the reason I came to Angelo State. Um, after my freshman year, Coach Scott said, well, we can win a national title here. And I was, I'm in. <laughs> that was the selling point for me. Um, so with it being my last season, that would be the dream. That would be a dream come true. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Paxton. <laughs> 
as the Rambles were selected to finish second in the preseason Lone Star Conference poll. The Rams were named the favorites to claim the 2023 Lone Star Conference title. ASU topped the poll with 23 of 32 first place votes and 407 total points. It was also announced that two players, Aaron Munson and Austin Beck, were named to the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association 2023 preseason all-region team. Munson led the Rams in wins a season ago, and Beck, LSC Freshman of the Year, will look to continue their dominance on the diamond. I see it as a challenge because others want to come after us and be number one uh, with the preseason rankings. We're obviously number one, but it's going to be a challenge for sure because everybody wants to come for us and it's going to, they're going to be playing at their best potential, which allows us to play at our best potential. And it's going to be a fun, it's going to be a fun ride for sure. As for the rest of the preseason poll for baseball, West Texas was picked to finish second, receiving eight first-place votes, and Kingsville in third with one first-place vote. Lubbock Christian and St. Ed's round out the top five. Tyler, Oklahoma Christian, St. Mary's International, and Arkansas Fort Smith round out the top ten, while Eastern New Mexico, Cameron, and UTPB round out the 13-team field. There's been one head coach in ASU baseball history, and that's Kevin Brooks. I had the chance to catch up with Coach Brooks ahead of the start of the season. Coach, 19 years you've been here. There's been one head coach here at ASU. Just talk about the process from then until now of building up the program to what it is today. Wow, you know, making me feel old. 19 years. Um, you know, it's, it's just uh, it's been awesome, you know, it's sort of to look back from from where we started um, to where we've come now, obviously with the facilities, um, you know, it uh, has been been just uh, a very much blessed. I'm very blessed, and we're very blessed with uh, where we've come to. Um, you know, a lot of great players, and a lot of support, obviously from the community, um, and then from the school to to get the facilities. Um, where they're at now and so you know it, it, I'd be lying to you if I told you this isn't what we envisioned when we started it but uh, it's been nice for a lot of it to come to fruition and we still got a lot of things that we want to accomplish and want to do um, that we still haven't quite done yet but um, obviously been, been a good run so far and uh, hopefully it continues. Last year you know a special one for you guys you know making the trip back to Cary you know we talked to the players you know their perspective how was it through a coach's eye you know in seeing everything that went on? Well last year you know uh, <laughs> the players I, I, I I'll be lying if I told you I expected us to get to carry when we started the season, just with the the huge amount of talent that we lost. Um, and obviously, we always think um, we bring in good players, and but you know that's a lot easier said than done for somebody to replace some of the iconic players that had left. Uh, and you know, Josh Elvier, Nick Sigunovich, Nick Novak. I mean, go down the list. And so. Um, for guys to come in and step in and, and fill those voids uh, that quick um, was was really impressive. And so, uh, but, and I really thought that team more probably than any other we've ever had, really they played at the best level they could play. Mm -hmm. And that's all you can ask, you know. And so I thought they really fulfilled their potential maybe better than any team we've ever had. So the uh, just a great season. How does, as a coach, the process go of, you know, seeing the new faces, getting them acclimated with, you know, the program, with, you know, kind of the winning standard that is here, you know, at Angelo State? Well, I think our players do a great job of establishing that from, you know, the first day of the fall. Um, and, you know, just one, bringing them along. We always talk about that uh, as a player. It's great if you get better and we want you to get better, but you're really not doing your job unless you're bringing a teammate along with you. And so our players have done an unbelievable job of that. Look behind us, all the, all the different trophies that you guys have, you know, brought back home to San Angelo. You know, obviously the elusive one that you guys still chasing, you know, a national championship. You know, in your opinion, you know, what would it mean, you know, to bring one back with the group that you guys have, you know, this season? Well, you know, we're going to get it done. I have no doubt about that. Which group does it first? Uh, 
I think is going to be really special. Um, and this group's got as good a chance as, as any um, to go accomplish it. And so I, I think once that does happen, I mean, uh, you know, obviously it will be a really big deal. And I think it would be a big deal uh, not only to the players that accomplish it in that team, but it, all the guys that came before them because, you know, they're all part of, of that. And that, that's one thing, you know, that's – that's so cool, especially we're getting about a week before playing and uh, just all the texts and calls and stuff, you know, you get from, from all the guys that have been in these guys' shoes, mm -hmm. um, you know, wishing them good luck and anything they can do. And, and so everybody still feels connected. Whether you're on that team or not, you feel like you're a part of that team. And I think that's a special thing that we've been able to, to establish. Awesome. All right, Coach, thanks for joining me. All right. Good man. luck this season and uh, wish you guys nothing but the best. And uh, for you, the players, and yeah, going forward. Thanks, Ron. The Rams begin the 2023 portion of their schedule this weekend at home against Eastern New Mexico. First pitch on Friday is scheduled for 3 p.m., but you will want to get there at 2.30 for their special ring ceremony. After their four-game series, the Rams hit the road for the first time this season, beginning February the 10th over in Lawton, Oklahoma, when they face Cameron, before returning home February the 17th for a four-game series against UT Permian Basin. Games are a single on Friday, doubleheader on Saturday, Saturday, then the finale on Sunday. And you'll see a lot of familiar faces on the field when the Rams kick the season off. But just like any year, a lot of new faces in the mix as well. I had the chance to catch up with some of those new players on how they're adapting to things here in San Angelo. We're all focused towards one goal, uh, which is to win a national championship. For the Angelo State Baseball Program, success is a word they've heard a lot, which helps new faces on the roster transition into this new chapter. And coming from a previous school compared to this atmosphere, it's just incredible. They're wel the coaches are welcoming, and it's beautiful. To have a team that has great chemistry with one another helps the coaching process go a lot smoother. They love each other, and, and that, uh, man, it, it does a lot of things, and so uh, a lot of positive things, and so really looking forward to see, uh, you know, what these guys can accomplish. For Hunter Mayo, the coaching staff has helped allow him to make this transition and continue a winning mentality. I kind of knew what to expect from Kevin Brooks, uh, winning mentality, and just seeing it every day in practice and how he uh, orchestrates his team to certain drills, how they need to be done every day. It's just, it's welcoming to see that kind of mindset work towards a national championship. The athletes now turn the page to this new season where they are hoping to continue history. The past generations have created this place that we have now, so us winning and continuing that history would bring uh, richness for the future baseball players that come to Angelo State. And one of those familiar faces back this season for the Rams for his sixth year, infielder Jordan Williams. I recently had a chance to sit down with Jordan. Here's that interview right now. All right, Jordan, thanks for joining me today. Um, you know, we often joke about how long you've been here. You know, the, the great grandfather, if you will, of the team. You know, just looking back on your time here, you know, thinking about all the different memories that you've had, you know, what sticks out to you, you know, as you enter your, you know, sixth year here at Angelo State? Oh, uh, I mean, it's been very special. I mean, when I first got here, I, you know, coming in here, I, you know, I was expecting it to be, you know, special, but I, I really came and put into words my expectations toward, you know, the reality, mm -hmm. just the, you know, the people I've been around and, you know, my teammates and coaches and what they've done for me and just, uh, it's been very special and it's definitely not something I'm looking forward to to leave here, but I know just like from being here, the way, you know, baseball, but just like growing up as a man and people around me have been just, it's been unbelievable. I can't really describe it. It's tough, so. Yeah. Well, we look forward to watching you this year. Sure. Um, you know, last year, obviously, a special year for you guys, you know, making the return trip back to Cary. You know, what was that like now that you can, you know, look back on, you know, what you guys accomplished? You know, from your point of view, you know, what are you remembering about, you know, not only the trip, but also, you know, that team as well as you guys enter, you know, a new year? Yeah, that, that team, was, it was so, that year was so special. You know, the team, we were so connected together and we just, you know, we weren't the most talented team that I've been around here and, you know, most of those guys would say that, but the thing about that team is we just, we just, we fought and we worked and, you know, it was very special to, you know, be able to do that with the, especially that group of guys I've been around together for so long. It was, it was pretty cool and it was something that, 
I know a lot of us will take the rest of our lives for sure. So, from from off season until now, you know, personally for you, you know, what have you felt you've grown the most in terms of your game, whether it's you know in the field or at bat, you know, that you are going to you know really focus on this year, you know, when you're when you're playing really for ASU. Yeah, so for me, I just really focus on you know finding my role and doing my job, whatever that is. I feel like I've done a. You know, as we said, I've been here for so long. A lot of guys come to me with questions, and I've tried to, you know, really be able to be there to help them out. But with things of, you know, just mindset and all that kind of stuff, and how we go about our business. But you know, just you know, I play, try to do my job, and then you know, wherever it might be on the field, I just do my job. So that's, I guess, all I've been trying to work on. So do my job and fill my role, and everything should work out pretty good. So A slogan for you guys this year: Why not us? You know, just talk about kind of how that came about for you guys in terms of, I know every year you guys, you know, try to chase that elusive national championship, but, you know, what went into, you know, coming together in terms of, you know, figuring out why not us? Well, you know, when you get to the postseason and carry, where, you know, obviously our goal, a lot of teams are, most of those teams are good enough to win the national championship, and we got to find something to push us over the edge, and you know, somebody's got to win it. So, you know, why not us? That's our that's our mindset, and that's our goal, that's our plan. So, and for you, you know, not only personally but also as a team, you know, a lot of high expectations. You know, not only with who you bring back, you know, who you, you know, coaching staff has brought in. You know, what are what are those expectations? You know, you hear about it, but from you guys, you know, inside the locker room, that's out there day in day out. You know, what are the expectations for you guys this year? Well, obviously, ultimately, our, our goal is to win the national championship and win that final game on Friday or Saturday and carry. But you know, in order to do that, you know, it's a long process. We got to get better every day. You know, go one day at a time, one practice at a time, and that's the expectation. Just you know, get better every day and take it one day at a time, and hopefully, at the end of this thing, we'll be the last one standing. Opening weekend for you guys, you know, it'll be a special one. You know, you guys get your championship rings to kind of, you know, commemorate, you know, the year that you guys had. You know, what's that like when you, you know, you get your ring and like kind of like a fuel momentum to like, hey, you know, I want to fill up my ring, you know, my hand with rings. You know, what what's that like for you guys? No, it's it's very cool. I mean, to get that, they used to always do a great job of uh, designing them. So it's a, it's cool, man, just to kind of like put that in a little, like, an object to just always remember for the rest of your life. It's, it's really cool, and, you know, getting that ring, it's, it's pretty special, and it's it's cool, but, so I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see what the design is this year, for sure, but no, it's it's really cool, so. Awesome. Well, good luck this year. We hope the best for, you know, all of you guys here, and uh, we look forward to another uh, successful season this year. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you again to Coach Travis Scott, Paxton Shurier, Coach Kevin Brooks, and Jordan Williams for taking the time to talk with us ahead of the 2023 season for both the Rams and Rambells as their seasons begin this weekend. City National Bank for sponsoring this special, and a special thank you to tuning in the last half hour to get a deep dive on what's ahead on the diamond for issue baseball and softball. For all of us here at KLST, including Sabrina Hoover, I'm Ryan Campo. Have a good night. Thank you for watching Inside the Dugout, sponsored by City National Bank.